Okay, well, we are excited um, to be walking through this slight tutorial on how to create a quiz inside of PowerPoint. Um, the previous video that I have uploaded was 36 minutes long, and it was the creation of this entire presentation. Um, but we're just going to walk through the steps of how I did this so that everyone is able and ready and can easily create a quiz inside Microsoft PowerPoint. Just to give you a rundown of the presentation tool that I'm using, um, this is the iOS version downloaded um, of Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, so tools may look just a little bit different if you're using a Windows Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, but nevertheless, we'll get started. Um, I will start by showing you the new slide implemented here on the home page. You can insert a new slide under home or insert. Um, and what I did is I knew that my quiz was going to be about identifying landforms and the definitions of them and how that students could remember them. So I knew that I wanted to have a very colorful first slide so that I went to the insert option up on the toolbar and I went to pictures because I knew I wanted to insert a picture. I searched online pictures and I typed in landforms and I hit enter and I started scrolling through these and I knew I was going to have a very nice font that stood out from the picture and why not have an image that already does it for you. So I took this image and I drug it to the side I wanted it on and I drug the size down to where I needed it is not how I did it the first time. Um, you'll see that it gives photo credits and creation credits right down here on the bottom. And you can also move those around as well by clicking on their box and dragging them down here. Uh, I'm not sure about the Windows side, but there are um, design ideas that this version gives. And I chose one um, that ended up like this with this little white piece of paper here. And I wanted to know we're traveling around the world looking at landforms. So I put something, jump on the plane and get and get to traveling. Fix my spelling. And then here in the subtitle is quiz on landforms. So they'll hit that next button um, or we can add a transition here. So we're going to copy and paste this. You can do that by clicking on, um, double clicking on the text box, or you can use your command keys, like mine is command C to copy and command V to paste. And I'm going to type in continue with, continue to the quiz. And we'll get to use this tool a lot. We are going to hyperlink this but I'm gonna make sure that this is large enough to where everything everybody could see it. We're gonna jump it up to 22 in the font. So we're gonna click on that box and we're gonna double click or right click on it and we're gonna go to hyperlink. You can look at these tools that says web page or file if you want them to link to the internet, to a document in, in this document which will link to the slides or even an email address. But for this case, we're gonna hit this document and it's gonna go to the next slide. We'll look at that tool for now. To double check that, you're gonna go to play from current slide and you'll see my screen share button. That won't be there for the students, but you'll click continue to the quiz and it leads right to the next question. So we'll hit end show to get out of there. I started out by first asking students, what best describes a bay? And our answer choices that we clicked are partly enclosed by land, surrounded by land, land surrounded by water, or shaped by wind and changes consistently. I changed this to a font that was 28 in size so that students could see it easily. And I also had a bullet point added in here. And instead of numbers, I chose letters. Now, every time I added a box, it copied A there. It did not change to the next letter. So I went to the bullet point and I went to bullets and numbering. And you just go to the second letter of the alphabet for here, which is B. The third letter would be C and the fourth letter would be D. And when you're ready to make that change, you hit OK and there it is. 
Now, I found this question uh, question mark by searching online pictures and typing in question mark. And I found this guy right here, and I clicked him, and I hit insert. This is the trickiest part of making a quiz inside PowerPoint. And it's getting your text boxes or your correct answers to link to the right pages. Before I link these to pages, you have to create them. So when they select the correct answer, it's going to lead to this page where it says, you got it. And a nice picture of a bay where they can see what that looks like. Then we want to give them to continue the, with the quiz option if they got it correct. But if they got that question wrong, we want to add something that tells them, oh man, try one more time. And you're going to have a return to missed question. And click me. It's always good to have that for those first couple so that they're familiar. So for this answer, the correct one was A. So I right-clicked or double-clicked on the text box and went to hyperlink. And because I've already selected it, it's going to show edit. I went to this document. In this case, the next slide is going to be the where it needs to go. But you might need to open up slide titles. And you're going to look here. We're on what describes a bay. And we know that this needs to lead to the correct answer. So we're going to hit OK. And to double check this, we're going to hit play from current slide and click that one. And there it is. We're on the correct slide because we got our question right. Now, if we got it wrong, we're going to select, we're going to check all of these that they are hyperlinked to the, oh man, try one more time. And because I've already done it, it's highlighted there. So we'll click OK. Same thing with this one, hyperlink. It's also selected. And this one should also be selected to try one more time. Once they lead, get led here, we'll click this and we'll hyperlink it back to what best describes a bay. Once they get this correct, you're going to create your next question so that you have somewhere to link it to. What is the characteristic of a gulf? We added our question mark man in here by copying and pasting from the last one. And we have our text, box, text boxes that are the same as before. So now that we have this page created, we'll go to the You Got It, and we're going to hyperlink this to our next question, which is, what is the characteristics of a gulf? Same thing here. If they get that one right, it's going to be partly surrounded by land. So question B will lead them here to you got it and continue with the quiz. If they selected the other answers, it'll take them here to, oh man, try one more time. Return to the question and try again. Once they get it correct, whether on the first or second try, they go here and they'll lead to the next question. What is an isthmus? Okay, so they'll select their answers. And if they select A, it will lead them here. So you did it. Continue with the quiz, which will lead to the next question. And the others will lead to the, oh man, try one more time. Return to the question and try again. So I've taken out that click me option at this point because students should be aware. When they continue with that quiz, they're going to come here to a true and false question. A peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides. True or false? If they say true, you got it right, and you'll see a picture and continue with the quiz. And because it's a true or false question, we want them to just be aware of what they're knowing or what they're learning, and we're gonna continue. What best describes a plane? So, we changed it to three multiple choice questions. I changed my bullets to what they needed to be. Our question mark guy is still here. If they get it right, and it, it's going to link them here. You'll notice that my titles have changed to you got it right, or try one more time, you can do it. Because when you get to linking some of these and hyperlinks, we'll take a look at this really quick. 
edit hyperlink. If we look at our slides, it kind of gets confusing if you keep naming the things the same. So we want to change it up just a little bit for our sake. The students really won't pay any attention, um, but it's easier on our side. So I have it selected here to go back to the correct one or try one more time. You can do it. And then once they get their correct answer, I do have a final slide that will be linked right here that says, congratulations, thanks for flying with us. And this is linked to the very last page for our students to celebrate that they are finished with our quiz. This is just a brief overview of how to do this. This does take some time, but once you get in the rhythm of it, it is very easy to do um, and easy to apply to Jeopardy games and things among that nature. And then these slides are movable to how you need to. Um, if you wanted to shuffle them up, they will still link to the next slide as long as it doesn't have a next slide selected. Um, if you don't want the students to know which question is wrong and which one's right. Um, and that is all for today. This will be posted on YouTube if you would like to watch it again. And best of luck in your travels through landforms um, for the Georgia Standards of Excellence. And be sure to comment if you have any questions.